exciting play during each of these Virginia Beach Soccer Club select games of the week. Each match will feature a Virginia Beach team and an opponent from the Southeastern Virginia Youth Soccer Association to which both belong. Not only are these select teams members of Savisa, but also the Virginia Youth Soccer Association, the United States Youth Soccer Association, and the United States Soccer Federation, the governing body for soccer in the United States. These are traveling teams. Not only do they travel as far as Richmond during the regular season, they also compete in tournaments scattered across the state, around the country, and even in foreign countries. While this is a select match you'll enjoy today, the Virginia Beach Soccer Club sponsors a variety of programs from the neighborhood league for boys and girls as young as five to the leagues for men and women over specified ages. Two regular features of this series will be seen at halftime of each match. Soccer Update will give you all of the latest local soccer news. Everything from referees announcements and high school results to the adult leagues will be covered. So you can keep abreast of what's happening in Tidewater's fastest growing sport. Our second feature, Play On, will be a short coaching session concentrating on the improvement of a particular technique. One of the boys in today's game will assist the coach in demonstrating the technique. Hopefully the younger and less experienced players in our audience will be able to learn from this and improve their own soccer skills. We hope you enjoy today's match. And may the Hi everybody, this is Jeff Steckroth at Little Creek Amphibious Base for the Virginia Beach Soccer Club Select Game of the Week. Today's match features the Virginia Beach Cobras and the Lafayette Admirals. The Cobras are 4-1-1 one, and, one, and the Admirals are 1-3. and three. Coach Kevin Denson and his 1970 Cobras will be introduced by Lenny Long, our color commentator, in a moment. Now let's meet the Cobras. Goalkeeper, Scott Keller. Number three, Johnny Deloach. Number six, Patrick Bastek. Number 14, Jason Copley. Billy Johnston, number 12. Number five, Paul Ferranti. Number four, Mike Pelton. Number 13, Frank McKinney. Number 15, Scott Whalen. Number seven, Robbie Yonkers. Number 10, Jason Field. Number 11, Sean Moore. Number eight, Steve Fort. Assistant coach, Joey Books and head coach Kevin Denson. I must apologize, folks. Obviously, we have had some technical difficulties and received recorded no audio at the time of the match. So let me interject a few words here. At the conclusion of our broadcast, we have some action of the 1972 Cosmos in their semifinal state cup match against the Richmond Strikers held this past Saturday. Also, be sure to stay tuned for Lenny Long's Play On featuring tricks, soccer tricks. The interview here between Kevin and Lenny centered about the wind, which was going to be a factor, and the fact that Kevin felt that his team might have difficulty getting up for the Lafayette Admirals as they are 1-3 and three and Kevin's team is 4-1-1. One and one. Now, as we prepare to meet the Lafayette Admirals, I must apologize again as I do not know all of the Lafayette Admiral players, so I'll read off the roster and their numbers. Number two is Neil White. Number three, Jeff Spar, center striker. Number four, Dave Callahan, sweeper. Number five, Jeff McClellan, right midfield. Number six, Dave Hemphill. Number seven, Mike Cutter, the left wing. Number eight, Dave Bashara, center back. Goalkeeper, Rob Catherman. Number 10, Perry Miles, center midfield. Number 11, Bob Prince. Number 12, Mike Shoemate, right wing. 13, Jody Jap, the stopper. 14, John Rose, left midfield. 15, Curry Smith. And 16, Tommy Bishop. Coaches are Mike Shoemate and Fred Hemphill. 
As the introduction of Lafayette players is completed, let me remind you of a clinic to be held this Saturday, May 21st, from 4 to 7 p.m. at Old Dominion University. This is hosted by the Southeastern Virginia Youth Soccer Association, and it will feature Carl Heinz Hedergott, the Director of Coaching for the United States Soccer Federation. So all coaches in the area are invited to attend that clinic. It is free to the public. Here's a good look at Mike Shoemate, head coach of the Lafayette Admirals, whose team was defeated by the Virginia Beach Cobras 3-0 earlier in the season. And the coaches both pointed out that they felt their team had improved quite a bit from that first match to today. Help me with this one. Okay, I think, Jeff, it's Oda Malam. Oda Malam, okay. The linesmen are Earl Yamada. Yamada and Trevin Pickett. And looking now over to the Admirals' side, getting some final words from their head coach, Mike Shoemate. We've just been informed of a referee change. That's Bob Sokolinski, who is in your picture. He'll be the center referee for the match. Here's the opening kickoff. And Lafayette immediately gives it back to the Sting, uh, to the uh, Cobras. You see Jason Copley making a run, a ball from Whalen played through. Copley's getting ready to hit one from a difficult angle, easily caught by Rob Catherman. So it's the Cobras who immediately come to the attack and get off the first shot of the match, barely seconds into the game. Boys will be playing two 35-minute half times in this 1970 age division match. Ball over the end line. And we've got a goal kick. Lafayette set for that goal kick. You see them trying to spread out and take advantage of the whole field. We're at Little Creek Amphibious Base near the Saudi Barracks for today's match. Mike Cutter moving laterally. Ball chipped over. They're trying to switch field. Awfully windy out here. I'm sure you'll see the ball up in the air a lot and uh, the boys having a hard time controlling it. It's a good ball played down the right wing. Mike Cutter making the run through the center, but immediately taken back by the beach, played forward by Johnny Deloach. Near the touchline. See Bob Sokolinski moving around well. Our referee for the match. Just kidding, Bob. Cross by Cutter, just wide. So Mike Cutter gets a nice opportunity there for Lafayette. Goal kick for Virginia Beach. Out near the touchline. Sean Moore heads it on. I'm sorry, that's Mike Pelton. Wins it back. But it's turned back over to Lafayette. Robbie Yonkers there, a little fellow with great skill. Left footed, plays the ball forward to Copley. Copley's got one man to beat. He tries to chip it over the top. Miss cleared. Lafayette having a hard time getting it out of its penalty area. There's a long shot. And we've got a handball, it seems, that Copley stopped the ball with his hand on that tough shot by Paul Ferrante, the center half. It's too bad the, the Copley boy got caught for that because I think it was unintentional, Jeff. I just think that ball was hit so well that he had a chance to get his hand out of the way. That was Paul Ferranti who took the shot from about 25 yards out in the dead center of the field. So Lafayette puts it back in play with an indirect free kick from just inside their penalty area. Ferranti, Copley. Copley looked to play it wide, miss hit it. He had his right wing making a run. This is Mike Pelton here. Tries to lay the ball off, doesn't hit it well. Good stick by number 10 for the beach, Jason Field. And here's Pelton again. Tries to chip the ball over the top, and you see Copley making that run to the right wing. Copley with the cross, doesn't hit it too well, and the goalkeeper, Catherman, picks it up. Well, I'll tell you, Joe, I think it's getting windy. You can see Rob Catherman's shirt, how it's just blowing in the wind. It is really windy out here. I think any balls that are going to be brought from the, the far side as the camera There's looks Ferranti at There's Ferranti again. I'm sorry. Ferranti with a shot that goes off Catherman's hands, and the beach will have a corner kick now. What I'm saying is that from the balls coming in from, like, this side, for example, the side where this corner is going to be, there's going to be tough to get a ball in the middle of the field. Well, you saw the goalkeeper try to punt the last ball out, and he barely got it out of his own penalty area. So the wind, even though it is more of a cross-field wind, is somewhat in the favor of Virginia Beach at this time. Paul Ferrani set to take it. Gets the ball up in the air. The wind's holding it up. And you see the Virginia Beach player getting first to the ball. That looked like number 12, Billy Johnston. Goal kick by Lafayette. Just barely clears the area. Chased down by number five, Jeff McClellan. 
Virginia Beach will throw it in in a moment. Throw in for Lafayette, number two, Neil White. They're right back. Yonkers. Now Mike Cutter. Cutter's the center forward for this Lafayette team. He's a big kid with good speed, very aggressive, number seven. Uh, Mike also, you notice, has come back quite a bit to help his Lafayette teammates get the ball out of their own end where most of the game has been played. We're barely five minutes into the match. No score. Lafayette and Virginia Beach Cobras in a 1970 division match. Cobras are off to a great start. They're 4-1-1. Lafayette, on the other hand, is struggling 1-3. And, and Lafayette was defeated earlier in the season by this Cobra team by the score of 3-0. Here's Cutter heading it. He's going to try to run by two people, which he does. He's got a step. Good recovery, though. Paul Ferranti chips it out toward his left wing. Intercepted by Neil White. Neil chips the ball. A couple of guys going up on the left side there. Johnny Deloach for the beach and Cutter. There's Cutter again. Ball across the area. Picked up easily, though, by the, co by the Cobra's goalkeeper. Scott Keller. Looks like, Jeff, looks like they go to this Mike Cutter quite a bit. You know, they've had four or five opportunities with their ball in the attacking. Uh, here's a play. Go ahead. From the left side, Jason Copley. Tough angle, and he just knocks it past the near post. What I was going to say is the, the three or four times that the Lafayette side has been in the defensive third or defensive half of uh, the Virginia Beach team, they've gone to Cutter every time. I think he's, his size is a real influence. Goal kick, Lafayette. A little bit better of a ball this time. It's number one, Jeff Spar for Lafayette. And the ball goes down the left wing. There's number 12, Billy Johnston. Billy, let's see, can't quite get a left foot on it. Goes over the end line, so another Lafayette goal kick. Sorry, it was a throw in for Lafayette near the touch line there. It's a nice move and a foul. Tripped up by Steve Fort. I think what happened there, Lenny, was uh, Steve was beaten by the uh, Lafayette player, Perry Miles, and rather than let him get by, he just took him down. Yeah, that happens quite a bit, Jeff. Known as a tactical foul, I believe. Here's Cutter again with a lot of room on the right sideline, moving toward the end line. He knocks it across, a little better ball this time, but his teammates aren't there. Lafayette again, ball knocked up high. Cutter and three Virginia Beach players challenging for the ball, and little Robbie Yonkers watches it run over the sideline. Throw in. Down the sideline, looks like the wind takes it over. So it goes over now to Lafayette. This Mike Cutter, Jeff, is a big player. He, uh, he's, a, he's at least six inches taller than anybody else on the field. And I really think that's to his advantage, obviously. He, uh, he's, he's that much, his legs are that much longer, so consequently he's that much faster also. He's a pretty dominating force, it looks like. Well, I had the pleasure of working with Mike at one of the soccer camps last summer, and uh, he showed me a lot at that time. So. Uh, I expect him to be a real uh, problem for Virginia Beach, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Kevin Denson doesn't have somebody mark him uh, man for man if he does prove to be a, a factor. There's Cutter again on the right side, getting some support from teammate Jeff McClellan, and this time Lafayette throws it in. Throw in. Near the end line. Still alive, though. You can really see the effects of the wind. Uh, our cameraman, Jim Snodgrass, is up there fighting the elements right now and uh, doing the best he can <laughs> under the conditions. Paul Ferranti, left footed out. There's a shot. Easy play. Punted out by Keller and it's a long ball. <laughs> This is Paul Ferranti, Jeff. It looks like he tried a through ball, but it was picked up by the Lafayette team. Robbie Yonkers to it first. Knocked out by Whalen. Man wide open on the side. A good shot, but right at the goalkeeper. Rob Catherman had no problem with that one. Even though it was hit pretty well, he had it, he had it pretty well contended. And we saw Copley there at the far post. Uh, even though the shot appeared to be a good one, he may have been able to get Copley since he was open. Mike Pelton. Ball played out, and goalkeeper lets it run over. New player in the lineup for Virginia Beach is number 11, Sean Moore, going in at center half, and number 11 for Lafayette, Bob Prince. Whalen can't quite get to it. Cleared out by Lafayette, headed back in by Virginia Beach. 
Sean Moore with his first touch on the ball. He tries to play it wide to his right wing. Here's Copley coming back for the ball nicely. Making a run through is Paul Ferranti. He had two men, actually, Paul Ferranti and Steve Fort. Copley came back for the ball, and the two center players immediately made runs through the middle of the field, but the ball didn't get to either one. Virginia Beach putting on some pressure, starting to control play a little bit. They are the heavy favorite today, having already defeated Lafayette once. Robbie Yonkers misses a tackle, and Cutter's with it. Cutter near the sideline, but it's out. Throw in for the beach. It's Neil White, right back for Lafayette, controlling the ball. And I want another Virginia Beach throw in. Maybe Mr. Sokolinski's running over there to give a drop ball. It might have been a little bit of a discrepancy. Yes, that's what he's going to do. Whenever there's a controversy as to who the ball went out on or was last played by, uh, the smart thing here would be for the referee to give a drop ball. It's the equivalent of a jump ball in basketball. Virginia Beach throwing it in down that sideline. Most of the play has been on the left side of the field, uh, away from us, and that's probably due to the wind. Virginia Beach is in the red jerseys and the black shorts, moving left to right, Lafayette in the club uniform, gray shirt, black shorts. Good long throw in, and there's a the man, there's Copley near the edge of the box, and it looks like he last touched it over the end line, so Lafayette gets the goal kick. The way the match has progressed thus far, I think it's just a matter of time before Virginia Beach is able to get one. Lafayette hanging in there, though. Still 0-0. Ball headed, but may not have cleared the penalty area. Played out again by Dave Callahan, the sweeper for Lafayette. Over that, the that's sideline. a play by Dave Callahan there, Jeff, because it went off a Lafayette player, and had it gone over the end line, it would have been a corner kick for the beach. Instead, now they get a throw in. Paul Ferranti tosses it over to Sean Moore, who will... Apparently take the throw in. And Sean finds Copley in the middle. Copley either has a lot of room, Lenny, or he's making a lot of room for himself by moving around. He's uh, been able to get the ball almost at will. He's really doing a good job of showing himself up front. They're going to his feet a lot, too. I think Kevin Denson tries to encourage that. Nice ball played outside by Bastek. Not a chance, not this time. Todd Whalen, the right wing. Scott Whalen, excuse me. His brother Todd plays for that uh, outstanding Virginia Beach 72 Charger team. Near the sideline, Jason Field beats one man, overcomes number eight, Dave Bashara for Lafayette. And Lafayette gets to it first, and they play a nice ball out. Number 12 for Lafayette, Mike Shoemate, son of the coach. Over the sideline, Lafayette wins it. Right here in front of our booth. Steve Fort, long ball over the touchline. Back in play with the Lafayette throw. Headed for a nice ball there by Mike Pelton. Ferranti gets to it but loses it. Lack of communication on the Lafayette player's part. There's uh, Jeff McClellan for Lafayette, but it's won back by Sean Moore. Sean tries to play the ball forward. Here's Copley again. Copley and Dave, M Dave Callahan after the ball. Callahan gets, it, gets to it first and knocks it over the sideline. Here's a good look at Frank McKinney, number 13, now entering the Virginia Beach lineup. And Whalen comes out. So it's McKinney at the right wing. Copley at center forward for Virginia Beach. Over the end, Lafayette goal kick. Now in the Lafayette lineup is Tommy Bishop, number 16. Again, Lafayette having a hard time getting the ball out. Here's Copley with it. Copley with McKinney trying to work something out. And there's a long shot by Steve Fort, the stopper back. Fort has come up frequently to lend support to the attack, and with a little breeze at his back, he's going to go ahead and hit those 30-yard shots. That must have been an offsides or a foul, so Neil White's going to put the ball back in play. Doesn't hit the ball well, and it's Copley with the ball. Goes to the diagonal ball. He is, he's a pretty sharp player, Jack. Looks like he reads the game pretty well, and he looks for players. Steve Fort. Looking to play it wide to Sean Moore. Moore now has it. And Moore cuts inside of his man. Hits a long, long ball. On goal and hits the post. What a shot. Sean Moore from some 38 yards out. Hit a long ball. I think he was trying to cross the ball. But instead it was played up and to the near post. And it hit the corner of the goal and went out. 
Robbie Yonkers entering the lineup for the second time for the beach. Number seven, the smallest player on the field, but one of the most skilled. Sean Moore comes up with this one, hits it across, and it's near the end line. Moore and number 13 for Lafayette, Jody Jap, challenging for the ball, and it's out of play. Yonkers, headed forward by Lafayette, out of play once more. Picking, so, go ahead. What I was going to say, uh, Jeff, is that Kevin Denson has his whole team pushed forward here. The only person back is Patrick Bastek, and he is the, he is the lone defender. Every other back is within 20 yards of the goal. Every other player for this Virginia Beach team. So if there's any kind of quick counterattack with this Michael Cutter player, it could be trouble. I think they should be aware of that. I think Cutter's the type who could get a ball and, and run 80 yards with it if the Lafayette defenders can get it out. So they do have to be careful. A corner kick, but it's not hit well. So Lafayette gets the goal kick. Lafayette goal kick. Ball's been at this end most of the time. Sean Moore collecting the ball nicely. He's got one man to beat there. He sets him up, goes to his left. Moore's left foot now. Good crossing ball. Frank uh, can't quite handle it. And Lafayette's number one, Jeff Spar hits it out. Robbie Yonker's trying to get it under control. Robbie hits that left-footed ball forward. Sean Moore and Neil White watch it go over the sideline. Sean Moore back in play. Finds, uh, looks for Paul Ferranti. Missed cleared by Lafayette. Still near the end line. Is it in play? Ball must, uh, must be in play. Long cross, it's in the net! Yes, we've got a goal! A long, long shot by Sean Moore, the second that he's hit. Sean hit that ball from near the left sideline. We were concerned whether the ball was even in play, and Moore hit the ball over the goalkeeper and curled it into the near post. I don't know if that was intended to be a shot, Jeff, but you know I think the winner might have had something to do with it, but all in all, it's a goal. And you're not going to tell Sean Moore it wasn't intended to be a shot. That's for sure at this point. So Virginia Beach has taken a lead, 1-0. We've played roughly 15 minutes in this match. So we're getting near the halfway point of the first half. And Virginia Beach has finally gotten that goal. They were pressing forward. And as I said earlier, it was just a seemed like just a matter of time before they would score. And now finally they have that goal. Jason Copley coming back. He does, set, does that so well. Look at that ball. We had Frank McKinney on the right side. Copley came back and created some space for himself and then played the ball wide to McKinney. For Lafayette now coming back, Jeff Spar. Yeah, He's foul. fouled from behind by Mike Pelton, however. Spar getting ready to play the ball. Can't find anyone. I'll tell you, Jeff, he, it was something that was encouraging to me right there. Jeff Spar looked for a quick restart. That's good at this age that these kids are looking to restart the ball as quickly as possible. There's a ball cutter in the goalie, no, challenge, no chance. Easy play for Scott Keller, and he knocks it out wide near that sideline and out. Back in the lineup for Lafayette is number 12, Mike Shoemate, and number 14, John Rose. Throw in near the sideline, Sean Moore. Mike Cutter for Lafayette. Yonkers with a man on his back. Look at that footwork by Robbie Yonkers. Robbie is a super indoor player. I've watched him and many of these boys play uh, indoors, and Robbie's skill is tremendous, and he's a real asset to an indoor team. Out of play. Lafayette throws it in. Neil White on that sideline. Sean Moore chests it down. And it's still in play. Neil plays it square to his teammate Jody Jap, who's at the stopper position. Down the sideline. Looking for Cutter, but that's an easy play for Bastek. Over near the sideline, knocks it off Cutter's foot, but Cutter wins it back. Lafayette still pressing. Challenged by Perry Miles for Lafayette. And there's a ball played forward. Neither team able to get it down right now and under control. Good chance to play it back, which he does. Nice ball to Neil White. Neil played it forward. Yonkers again. Gives it back, though. Dangerous place for Perry Miles to have the ball. Ferranti, a nice uh, re return pass by Perry Miles. Lafayette showing some uh, attack now. Here's Ferranti, plays it outside. A lovely ball by Ferranti. Still in play, Jason Field chasing it down and it goes over the sideline. That was a good example of a team changing the, the field of play, Jeff. They came all the way from that left side where they've been on most of the time, the Virginia Beach team, and decided to come down the right side. So a quick ball 
to one player in the center midfield, they kick it out the right side, and all of a sudden you have a whole new attack. Well, Ferranti showed good vision that time as he looked from uh, the left side where the ball came over to the right side where he had a couple of open men. There's a chance Jason uh, Field tried to play the ball forward. There's that long ball out, and it's Patrick Bastek. He's got good skill. I, I can't see him giving the ball up uh, easily back here. But if Mike Cutter gets close, that could be trouble. Yep. That's Tommy Bishop entering the lineup for Lafayette. Throw in. Throw looked a little, yes. Bob Sock didn't like that one. No, I'm whistled, sorry. Whistled for the foul throw. Thank you, Bob Sock, for agreeing with me. Yonkers. Robbie gets through. He's being held back by number five, McClellan, for Lafayette. And it's cleared. Good shielding by Steve Fort. Looked like uh, he may have been tripped, but uh, Lafayette player got the ball first. Bastek plays a long ball wide. Throw in, one back by the beach. That was Ferranti. Mike Cutter tried to chip the ball up there. Ferranti again, looking for Frank McKinney on the right side. Yonkers, really scrapping for the ball. Ferranti, Yonkers, oh, good pass to Sean Moore. Moore cuts inside, Neil White. Moore with the left-footed ball. Copley now. Copley gets to it first. Oh, I can't keep it in. Good hustle by Jason Copley, number 14 you see in your screen. I like the looks of this Jason Copley, Jeff. He reminds me of a big, tall central striker out of Liverpool or something. He comes back, shows his feet well. Looks like a good, strong kid. He's able to take people on. Use both feet. Uh, of Malcolm McDonald, if you remember him. He's a good player, and uh, well, I think... Malcolm McDonald? Both. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Copley, uh, he's a, a real good athlete. I know he plays basketball, and uh, you're starting to find a lot of good athletes who are, are getting into soccer. There was one time when only the boys who couldn't play anything else tried out for soccer, but now you're getting some of your best athletes to play the sport, and I think uh, Jason's one of those examples. And you can look at some of these other kids on the beach team, and Lafayette, too, for that matter, and they're strong, aggressive kids, and uh, it's obvious that they could be playing most any sport they want, and they've chosen to play soccer, and I like to see that. Bastek. Now there's trouble. Bastek got caught up. Mike Cutter switches the ball to his teammate, Mike Shoemate, but Shoemate gives it right back, and Steve Fort wins it, plays it forward. McKinney holding. Uh, there's a good run. Ball wasn't played ahead of him, though. I'd say that Kevin Denson's done a nice job of teaching these kids how to knock the ball around and wait for runs and hold on to it. They're, they're doing a nice job at, at that. Yeah, I think it's obvious that, that almost all the boys ha seem to have that skill of coming back for the ball and turning with it or shielding it until they have time to turn. John Rose plays it back. Nice ball, but it looks like the goalie should handle this easily. No, Bastek plays it. He's got time. He doesn't get it up in the air. 14, John Rose. Bastek again. Boys are over there in some het, some high grass. Shoemate throws it in. McKinney wins it back. Shoemate after it. And McKinney once more. Paul Ferranti. Jason Copley. McKinney. Good idea. I think Jason had the right idea. He's gotten the uh, Lafayette defenders to start thinking about the balls that he's playing wide, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him turn and take a man on here now that he's wide in the field for himself. Good switching ball attempted by Virginia Beach. Steve Fort knocks that one up in the air. Neither team able to get it down too well. Now McKinney's got it. He's looking for Copley and Fort, uh, Ferranti. Ball headed forward. Neil White on the right side. Neil and Jace and uh, Sean Moore. It's a nice ball from Neil White right there. And Robbie the Yonkers wins it. Robbie looking for Sean Moore, and it goes over. Now back in the lineup for the beach is Jason Field, number 10, as Ferranti gets a break. Lafayette, goal kick. Also in the lineup for the beach is Billy Johnston, number 12. Callahan, the sweeper, hits the ball for Lafayette. Jeff, I have about six minutes left, uh, and I'm, again, I haven't been close yet, but that's what my watch is saying. Um, I think if, if Lafayette can keep it a one-goal difference, the wind it might be going a little bit with the beach. 
and that might help Lafayette in the second half. The beach could really secure things if they can get another goal here before the end of the half. Yeah, I agree. For Lafayette, it's very important that they not give up another goal. Uh, Sean Moore hitting another ball across, left-footed to goalkeeper um, Catherine. Catherman. Catherman. Good punt this time by Catherman. Interesting to see the goalie score the tying goal. 2 2. There you see Bob Sokolinski, our referee for today's match. On one line is Earl Tamara, and on the other is Trevin Pickett. Virginia Beach goal kick. Over there, Robbie Yonkers, the smallest and the biggest. Yonkers and Cutter. And the ball's out of play once more. Extremely windy. Temperature about 77 degrees. Nice day for soccer in this Virginia Beach Soccer Club Select Game of the Week. Lafayette throw in, ah, oh, collision there between Cutter and Yonkers. Sean Moore on the left side. Neil White sticks him this time, however, and now he's looking for a teammate. Finds uh, Jeff McClellan, and it's out of play once more. Robbie Yonkers over to pick it up. He'll put it back in play for the Virginia Beach Cobras, who lead 1-0. According to Lenny Long, our color commentator, we should be about five minutes from halftime. Cutter going one-on-one. -on -one. Good chance to use his goalie. Instead, he elects to play the ball out, and Mike Cutter sticks him. Can't see on the television, Jeff, but I was, I was looking out of our booth, and the goalie was well covered. I don't think he could have used the goalie. I think he thought about it, but the goalie was well covered by the other Lafayette players. Well, when in doubt, the rule is, when in doubt, play it out, and that's what he elected to do. Cutter and Yonkers again. Cutter wins this one off the beach player's foot, so it looks like we've got a Lafayette corner kick. Perry Miles, number 10, over to take the corner kick. Wind a little, quite a bit in his face, as a matter of fact. He's able to get it into the penalty area, though. Cutter, and you see there, number three, Johnny DeLoach getting out with the ball. Sean Moore loses it, though. Three players can't decide. Bastek plays it out. Tell you, another thing you can't see on the, can on the television right now, Jeff, that I picked up was that the backs from Virginia Beach really got out of there. I guess Kevin really works on that offside strap with them. Well, it's not surprising that he would employ such a tactic, having played for you at Virginia Wesleyan College for four years, where offside trapping is a way of life following corner kicks. Nice ball played up, but Lafayette wins it back. Good ball played square by Lafayette. Finds his left wing. Good run by Mike Shoemate, and it's knocked out of play. Shoemate puts it back in. See some of our crowd on hand for today's match on Mother's Day. I'm sure all the mothers are real happy to be here today. Near the end line again. I have about two minutes left, Jeff, two and a half minutes. I think uh, uh, Lafayette's pushing here. If they can get a goal, it could really make a big difference in the second half. No question. They've gotten the better play out of uh, in about the last five minutes. So if they can maintain this momentum, even if they go in uh, a goal down at halftime, I don't think that's too bad considering the uh, conditions and the fact that they're fighting this wind. Robbie Yonkers on the left side. Let's see. Cut it back. Good move by Robbie. Head up. Looking for someone. Nice job of Robbie by Robbie Yonkers of controlling play there. Tough little, back player, to Neil White. tough little player at Robbie Yonkers. Inch for inch, he's probably as, as good as there are in his age group. Neil White, Sean Moore kind of laying off him there. Sean Moore now looking for his central, central striker, Paul Ferranti. Neil White, good move. Chipped up. Neil White again. Most of the play, as we said already, has been on that side of the field, the far side. And it's over the end line. I'm sorry. No, the ball is... Okay, ball is out of play, and it looks like Lafayette gets a throw, and it was right near the corner. So Lafayette, zone end. <laughs> Tough wind. 
We hope our camera crew is still up there at the end of the game, Jeff. I, Jim could be uh, uh, in ocean view by the end of this game. Jim Snodgrass. <laughs> I just saw his hat come off the top of the booth. <laughs> Throw in by the beach. Over there, Neil White and Paul Ferranti. Ferranti now will put it in play. Nope. Correction, Lafayette gets it. It's a good time now to thank Captain Carbone and the people here at Little Creek Amphibious Space who have been so kind as to allow the Virginia Beach Soccer Club to use these fields at the Saudi Barracks and a couple of other fields on the facility over the past several years. Makes Jeff, it, I th yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. It makes it possible for, for these kids to play uh, where otherwise they may, may not be able to. There just aren't that many fields available in Virginia Beach. That was the halftime whistle. See Bob Sokolinski there asking for the ball. It's halftime, and right now we have the Virginia Beach Cobras ahead of the Lafayette Admirals by the score of 1-0. Well, it's halftime now at Little Creek where the Virginia Beach Cobras are ahead of the Lafayette Admirals by the score of 1-0. Lenny, what's been your impression of play thus far? Well, I, I think the beach is dominated up to this point. I think that Lafayette has had a couple of chances that Mike Cutter's a big player and obviously pretty dangerous. Uh, I think the beach just has a couple more players that, that are able to control the ball, knock it wide, uh, take people on, and they're a little bit stronger, it looks like right now. Uh, and that's the difference in this game. I don't think there was a shot that uh, th that went in. I think it was trying to cross the ball, and the wind happened to get a hold of it. So, you know, I, I think the game is still pretty well wide open. Anything could happen. Well, I agree. I think Virginia Beach uh, has, has shown better stuff thus far. They've got several players who come back well for the ball, including Jason Copley and, uh, and Steve um, Fort. And those two players, along with a host of other players, are doing a great job, as you said, of keeping the ball spread out and looking for those wide players. For Lafayette, though, uh, they, they had a flurry there toward the end of the first half. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see them put some pressure on Virginia Beach. And I think a lot depends, too, as you've always said in coaching, how you come out in the second half, if you come out ready to play, if you put pressure on the other team, then that could turn the game around. But for Lafayette, who was a 3-0 loser earlier in the season to this Virginia Beach team, I think they have to be pretty pleased with just a 1-0 deficit. It's quite windy, as you can probably tell. The ball's uh, been up in the air a lot, and I think neither team has been able to keep it under control quite as well as they would like. Um, who, what do you think about Lafayette's chances in the second half if they do come out and get that first goal. What would happen then? Well, I think if they come back, uh, this is a, a definitely, a soccer's a game of momentum, and if you can get a goal or anything that might that might result in, in, in the team getting up, in other words, of a shot off a post or the goalie on the opposite end making a fantastic save, that could get their entire team up. It's a game of up and downs uh, a lot, and uh, I, I think if, if something like that, if they can come out early on, Jeff, and do something that's kind of impressive, it might be a difference in this game. On the other hand, probably if Virginia Beach is able to get that first goal and, and go ahead 2 nothing, that would be tough for Lafayette to come back. Well, we'll be back with the second half kickoff in a moment. We're getting ready for the second half kickoff. Virginia Beach will kick it. I'd like to thank our assistant at halftime, Pete Yonkers, for his help in the booth, technically. Pete is the older brother of little Robbie Yonkers, who is playing for this Virginia Beach Cobras team. Paul Ferranti and Jason Copley set to kick it off, and there's the whistle. 35 minutes of play. Steve Fort knocks the ball outside. And it's played, played back to Ferranti. Ferranti hits a long ball over to the left side. Looking for uh, Scott Whalen. Nice ball out by Lafayette over near the sideline. That's Neil White out there. He did a pretty good job. Neil right did a back. good job of turning yeah. the ball and getting it up in the air over the defenders. Ferranti looking across. He had Copley there in the upper right-hand portion of your screen. Todd Whalen, look at Whalen lean on his, his opponent. And you see Perry Miles there for Lafayette. Whalen wins this one. He knocks it across. Misplayed by the goalie. It's a shot. No, it could be. Oh, what a play. Jason Copley headed the ball, and we thought it was going in. And instead, goalkeeper... Rob Catherman was able to make the play. A couple of opportunities for Virginia Beach. I don't think we've heard a whistle now, Lenny, have we? Yeah, I think, I think uh, referee Sokolinski did blow his whistle. Jeff, that's exactly what we talked about at halftime, that something like that might pick up the Lafayette team. They're going making a spectacular play. I agree. Now, now Sokolinski has blown the whistle. Oh, I see. He wanted him to get he, rid of the ball. Right, for okay. those of you who are, are not so familiar with the rules, had Bob Sokolinski, our referee, blown his whistle while the goalkeeper was in possession, this won't seem fair to you, had he blown his whistle, the ball would have been dropped at that point between two players, and it would have been a 50-50 ball about two feet in front of the goal. So he wisely elected to 
let the goalkeeper punt the ball out. Having a look at a couple of our youth players, uh, or a couple of teams in the, in the background, in our neighborhood program, we have boys and girls in the age group uh, five to six who are making up a game this Sunday afternoon. Normally they play on Saturday. Getting set for a drop ball between uh, the two players for Virginia Beach, Johnny Deloach and Dave Hemphill for Lafayette. Goal kick for Lafayette. 1-0, Virginia Beach leading Lafayette. Sean Moore down the right-hand side. We saw Moore on the left-hand side in the first half. There's a nice ball for Ronnie with the shot, just wide. Nice ball by, uh, by Sean Moore. A good service out there. That's Excellent nice. ball, played low and hard and Ferranti was able to hit the ball first time and just barely missed. Jeff, that's a word that I think a lot of coaches and players should put in their, into their vocabulary if they're dealing with soccer, and that is service. The ball that Sean delivered across the front, we, we like to call service. And if somebody gives good service, then that's, that's, a, that's a nice ball and usually can result in a goal or at least a, a shot on goal. Now you see Ferranti breaking through. Ferranti still with the ball and plays it back to his goalkeeper nicely. I, I suppose the word service is something like break. Break? Sorry, that was uh, throw in for Lafayette. Mike Cutter challenging for that one. Ferranti wins it, chips it forward. Sean Moore taking a breather out there on the sideline after that long run he made. Lafayette getting some things together here. One back by Mike Shumate who knocks it across. There's Cutter. That was close, Cutter and, uh, and the Virginia Beach player. There's a dive. Obviously, uh, Coach Denson has been instructing his players on the art of falling, because that was well fallen by number eight, Steve Fort. Just kidding, Steve. He was fouled. And referee Sokolinski saw it and called it. Lafayette uh, staying with Virginia Beach thus far. We've played just three or four minutes here in the second half. There's Bastek looking across. Ball up in the air, and... Got a couple of guys. There's Copley again coming back. Plays a nice ball out square. See his left wing there. Whalen coming back for it. Whalen hits a good ball down the left side of Robbie Yonkers. Yonkers making a long run. Cuts the ball back inside of Mike Shoemate. Loses it. And there's a left footed ball over the end line. Goal kick for Lafayette. Chipped up. It brought down under control by Ferranti, who immediately looks wide for Whalen. Whalen trying to beat Neil White. Not that time. Throw in. Comes Whalen. Long throw. Real nice. And uh, knocked over the end line, apparently. So we'll have a Virginia Beach. Throw in or goal kick? Uh, throw in or throw corner in. kick? I think it's a throw in. Okay, it was a throw in. Ball went into Copley. Copley cutting the ball back. And there's a good crossing ball. Oh, right in the goalie's hands. I think he was surprised. Sean Moore was right there, just inches away. But Catherman was able to come up with that one. There's a misplayed this ball. This could be trouble. Whalen going after it. Nice ball played forward by uh, White. Bastek, the sweeper, coming over. Staying with it. Now he goes back to his position, and Ferranti comes up with the ball. Jeff, you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing Virginia Beach winning 50-50 balls, and that could be the difference. They seem to, be, they seem to want it a little bit more at times. They do seem to be getting first to the ball. There's a nice attempt at a through ball, but easily picked up by Beach's goalkeeper, Scott Keller. Kevin Denson apparently has decided to go with Keller today, uh, although I know that Sean Moore also plays quite a bit in the goal for him. Bastek under some pressure. Good ball out to Frank uh, McKinney, but they lose it. Then there's Cutter. Here's a chance right in front of the goal. Over the end line. I thought for sure we had a, a shot or an opportunity there for Lafayette to tie it up, but we didn't. So it's still 1-0. In the lineup now for Virginia Beach is Jason Field. Ferranti going to take a break. Those halfbacks are doing a lot of running, and that's why Kevin Denson is moving his midfielders around, trying to keep some fresh people in the lineup. It is warm, and uh, I think the boys can be expected to get a little tired as the play goes on here in the second half. We've played uh, close to 10 minutes now in the second half, and Virginia Beach still leads 1-0 over the Lafayette Admirals. 
their opponent in today's Virginia Beach Soccer Club Select Game of the Week. Whalen has one man to beat now. He cuts it back. What a fine move. Here's the shot. Saved by the goalie. Over oh, the top. No. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Two. Two real fine opportunities for the Virginia Beach team. They weren't able to capitalize. This could be Lafayette's day if they could start winning some 50-50 balls. Somebody's on their side. That was a chance for Jason Copley after you saw the fine move by... Here's another one for Copley. Well played, though, by Lafayette. Number six, it looks like. Dave Hemphill got to that one first. And Virginia Beach wins it back again. Copley played forward by Lafayette, and they withstand the pressure. You're right, it's been, uh, it's been a game where Virginia Beach has had the majority of the chances, but they're only up by a score of 1-0. So if Lafayette can hang in here and get a couple of breaks of its own, they could equalize. That last chance down there, you saw a fine move in, uh, in by Scott Whalen, who cut the ball back, took the shot. It was deflected by goalkeeper Catherman, and Copley was there and tried to just side-foot side it into the goal, and he knocked it over the top instead. Robbie Yonkers, ball out of play for a beach throw-in. Well, you know, we're real grateful to Captain Carbone and the people of Little Creek, but the grass is a little high, and I'm, well, the reason I said that is we don't want to be negative. Uh, and that does make a difference uh, with somebody who is not real strong with the ball, trying to get the ball through that stuff. You can see the difference out there. Frank McKinney knocks it forward. There's the ball played off the head of one of the Lafayette players. Sean Moore was there to challenge for it. Mike Cutter, we haven't seen much of Mike Cutter since about the first 10 minutes of the game when he seemed to be all that Lafayette had going for it. And he created a few chances of his own, but uh, for the most part, Virginia Beach has been able to cut him, cut him off. Good ball played outside to Yonkers. Jeff, would you say they're cutting Cutter? Weak. Weak, sorry. Good action in the middle of the field. Nice ball out right to the feet of the... This is the one they've been looking for, this nah. long ball. That's a little bit too much, though. But it, that's, that's their game plan, though. That has to be their game what plan. What they're trying to do is create a situation where the sweeper back, Bastak, comes over to the side of the field the ball is on, and then the ball is switched back to the opposite side, and Mike Cutter and whoever it is go one-on-one. -on -one. So I think uh, Lafayette is banking on Mike Cutter to get them back in this game. Out of play for a throw-in. Nice ball played to Cutter. Now there's a chance where Cutter should probably have brought the ball down to his feet and tried to turn with it. Good long throw in. Steve Fort knocks it straight up. He'll get a chance to head his own ball, and he does out of play, though. Throw in. Lafayette Cutter with a good long throw in. See, Lafayette has to have somebody pressing that man right there, Jeff. They have to have somebody pressuring the man that's getting ready to clear it out of the 18. Hope for a mistake or something. Especially on a throw-in, there is no offside. Nutmeg. There's no offside, so they could very easily have a player standing up as far as they wanted. Whalen down the left side. Neil White again. Neil White has had a strong game for Lafayette. Now he's moving laterally, looking oh, to switch the ball. That's really nice. Nice soccer from that outside right back position. You love to have your players on the outside of the field have the ability and the confidence to take the ball to the center of the field and switch it, especially as these boys get older and, and more uh, physically developed. They'll be able to hit that long crossing ball some 40 or 50 yards. But it's certainly a good tactic, and uh, Neil White gave you a good example there. Frank McKinney being challenged by Jeff Callahan, uh, excuse me, Jeff McClellan. Mike Pelham comes out with the ball. Look at him try to switch it. Nice job. Here's Robbie Yonkers. Head up. Beach player spreading out. Good ball outside to Whalen. This should be something if he can get it across. It's up. It's high. Copley there. There may have been a linesman's flag. Either that or Copley was called for a foul. I think he was called for a foul, Joe. I think they, I think he, they think he brushed into the goalkeeper. Beautiful buildup, though, by Virginia Beach as they started on the right back position and switch the ball all the way across the field. Sean oh, Moore right in front of the goal. Good ball from the Yonkers boy. I'd say that was a nice left-footed half volley. Put it right in front of, uh, of the goal. But Lafayette withstands the pressure again, and now they're coming out on a quick counterattack. 
This is what the beach is susceptible to. They have to be careful. Out of play. Paul Ferranti sets up for the throw in. Cutter intercepts it. Ferranti knocks it forward and over the touchline. Back in the Lafayette lineup, Bob Prince, number 11, number 12, Mike Shoemate, and number 14, John Rose. Teams are allowed to substitute when they have possession of the ball on a throw in or on a goal kick or after a goal is scored or when there's an injury. Ferranti with lots of time. Nice ball played up to his teammate, Billy Johnston. Johnston and Bob Prince going at it, and there's Ferranti clearing the ball. Sean Moore waiting for it, out of play. Moore with the throw in. Copley. Jason had two men to beat there, and he was unable to do so. Lafayette getting it out. Good ball played up. Copley on the right-hand side, and he loses it out of play. Admirals throw it in. Good ball played up by the beach. Wide to Sean Moore, and he loses it. I really like the way Virginia Beach, uh, Kevin Netson has his team knocking the ball around, looking backwards, waiting, holding the ball. Uh, they do a lot of nice one touches and, and two touches. That's it's good to see that at this age. I think uh, one thing that's that's helping the Virginia Beach Cobras is the fact that Lafayette is playing sort of a low pressure defense. They aren't marking quite as tightly as some other teams that we've seen, and Virginia Beach is taking advantage of that and finding the open man and knocking it wide and doing all the right things. That one's won by Bob Prince, but he immediately loses it over the touch line. So Virginia Beach throws it in. Sean Moore pressuring. Ball still alive and cleared out by Lafayette. Lafayette's struggling to get the ball out of their half now, Jeff. Beach is pushing them pretty hard for the last five, 10 minutes. I have about uh, 15, 16 minutes gone. And that's Here's Copley, the Copley in the box, controlling the ball nicely. Good job of shielding. There's a dangerous play, but no whistle. So the ball goes out. Long goal kick, gets through everybody. And again, here's a, here's a situation where Lafayette has nobody up. And Paul Ferranti has all day to turn and play the ball forward. Uh-oh, a little give and go attempted, but they lose it back there. Ferranti knocks it up. Good stick for Lafayette by John Rose, headed toward that far sideline. That's the direction in which the wind is blowing quite hard. Most of the balls in the air have been blown to that side of the field. So it's hard for the boys to keep it down and under control on a day like this. But Virginia Beach has done well, well enough so far to lead by a score of 1-0 over these Lafayette Admirals. Mike Cutter back in the Lafayette lineup after a brief rest. He'll probably be in to stay now. That's probably a tactical move by their coach, give, give their big boy a chance to rest up a little bit and then let him go for the last 10 or 15 minutes of the game. Boys letting it bounce in there. That's Paul Ferranti. And Cutter with a shot. I, th I don't know if that was a shot or if he tried to hit the ball to the far post to his right wing, but it didn't get through the host of Virginia Beach defenders. Perry Miles makes the throw, and it's cleared away. Jason Copley looking for Sean Moore. Lack of communication there between the two players. Mike Cutter getting ready for the long throw. And Bob Sokolinski has... I think we had to substitute. Lafayette wanted to substitute, Jeff, and I think that uh, Mr. Sokolinski did not know it. And that's what we have. So coming in now right. is number five, it looks like. Jeff McClellan, that is. Good look at him. So he moves over there to his right half position. Cutter, long throw, headed by Bastek. There's a long shot by Lafayette. Bastek oh, has a dangerous trouble. play. Very aggressive play by Lafayette's number seven, Mike. Uh, no, that was not Mike Cutter. Sorry, here's Mike Cutter after the ball. Ferranti on him. Here, Kevin Denson saying, leave him, leave him. Oh, a man on or off. Oh, off 
offside, and it's a good thing. Jeez, and there were two guys 10 yards offside, or five yards offside. And for a minute there, I think Kevin Denson didn't think the referee was going to pick it up, or the linesman was going to pick it up, rather. And I started seeing him walk down the side of the field. Knowing Bob Sokolinski, he probably withheld his whistle just to see if anybody would get excited. And then he blew the whistle for the offside call. It's always good to keep the fans involved in the game, isn't it, Jeff? That's right. Bob Sokolinski has been a player and coach and one of the founders of the Virginia Beach Soccer Club. And he's been out of the Tidewater area for about a year on deployment. So it's nice to have him back and see him in action. Two 1970 teams competing today, the Virginia Beach Cobras and the Lafayette Admirals. Score at this point, 1-0. We're about midway through the second half. As you see goalkeeper Rob Catherman pick it up for Lafayette. Lafayette had a nice little sit flurry down there that, you know, about a minute ago, Jeff, and that I think that might have scared Virginia Beach a little bit. I think one of the things, though, is that Lafayette's not ready for this offside trap because they haven't been down as much as they probably would, would like to be. So consequently, when the ball is cleared out, they're, they're going to get caught offsides quite a bit probably. It's a long goal kick and a punt. A shot. Catherman's there. That was after the free kick. Catherman came up with it and punted it out toward the left. Ferranti, long throw, headed on. And there's the ball cleared up by Lafayette. You see Frank McKinney trying to find his right uh, wing, McKinney, um, Ferranti. And once more, lots of time for these Cobras. Where the wind is really picking up, there's a couple of big gusts. I Cameraman know. Jim Snodgrass hanging in there. And Bastak knocks it up. Over the touchline, throw in. The beach getting set for the throw in. Game is still close. It's 1-0. Virginia Beach has had the better of the play. But Lafayette is still in this game. Jason Copley, nice run down the uh, right sideline. That's nice soccer right there. Copley comes back, holds the ball, and then, a, and then the midfielder makes a run down deep. Copley gives him the ball. And it's just over the end line. A real good move there. That's an overlapping run by the right midfielder. Good look at Scott Whalen. Scott coming off. Ball back in. You saw Mike Cutter lay the ball off for Lafayette. Nice job of chesting the ball down. Cutter and uh, for the beach, Paul Ferrandi challenging. I believe that's the wrong man. That was Steve Fort. Bob Sock has whistled a dangerous play. Good call. Lafayette chips the ball out. Bastek knocks it again. I, I think, think the he ball, yeah, wants the ball to be stationary. Right, I think the, the, ball, the ball must be stopped. So now Lafayette will take that free kick. They only have one man pushing up, and Virginia Beach has all of its defenders back. I have about 11 minutes left in the game. So a lot could happen. Uh, no angle. Tough play there. Neil White is up at the right wing. I have a look at a few of the spectators out on this Mother's Day for today's game between the Virginia Beach Cobras and the Lafayette Admirals. We're down to about the 10-minute mark in the second half. Ten minutes to play. Virginia Beach hanging on to a 1-0 lead, and that goal was scored by Sean Moore early in the second half when he hit a long ball from the left sideline and the ball curled in, aided by the wind perhaps, curled in over the goalkeeper's head for that 1-0 lead. And it stood to this point. We thought that uh, perhaps Virginia Beach would be able to come out in the second half and get a goal, but they've been held even by this Admirals team. The Admirals were defeated by the Cobras earlier in the season, 3-0. Mike Cutter with a wind-aided throw should be able to get the ball well into the goal area. And you see the throw. Lafayette's there. There's a chance. 
good opportunity. Billy Johnston, I'm sorry, number 12, Mike Shoemate had a chance there. Good ball played back to the sweeper. Now, we have a foul called. Thought we, uh, thought we had it offside, but uh, apparently there was a foul up here around the ball. Did you see Bob Sokolinski, today's referee, pointing back? And Lafayette gets set for that free kick. If you try to be careful here, I think, you know, one goal, and we've said this, if we said it once, we've said it ten times, Jeff, could really change the momentum of this game. There's a dangerous ball up by Ferranti, and it's over the end line. So Lafayette gets a chance. I think one of the toughest positions for a coach to be in is with his team up 1-0. You're, you're afraid to do the things that you normally do because you might make a mistake that would cost you a goal, and you kind of sit back and you play defense, and you, you don't do the things that have got you, gotten you where you are. Mike Cutter, almost. Let's see who hit it last. I think it's going to be a goal kick, Jeff. Checking in for the Virginia Beach team is, is Whalen, number 15. Steve Fort, taking it. It's a nice ball into this wind, but it's won by Billy Johnston. Neil White and Johnston. And there's Bastek. Bastek having trouble clearing this one. Again, Johnston. There's the chip. Mike Cutter in front of the goal! Yes! Mike Cutter has equalized! And Lafayette has come back with a goal some eight minutes from the final whistle. My position made a motion towards the ball. So after that goal by Mike Cutter, Virginia Beach's lead has been erased. And Lafayette and the Beach are tied up 1-1. Well, Kevin Denson said before the match that one of the hardest things for his team today was going to be getting up emotionally for this Lafayette team. And I think maybe that's true. They're, they're not playing quite as hard as they could. They're playing well. Don't get me wrong. They're playing good soccer. They're knocking the ball around. But they haven't really had that aggressive attitude that's necessary to score goals. And Lafayette's Mike Cutter has finally gotten a chance, and he rifled home a shot from about 10 yards out Point blank range, not a thing the goalkeeper could do about that one. Scott Keller was paralyzed by that hard shot by Mike Cutter. And that's there's an, Cutter with a That's an easy ball. ball to put over the top of the goal, Jeff. So he was he did a pretty nice job of keeping that down. The ball was, it's, it's a volley, and he has to get his foot over the top of it, and he did, and he really hit a nice shot. It was a bit of a side volley. He came from the side with his right foot and hit a good ball in the upper part of the, part of the net. You see Kevin Denson there with the blue shirt standing by as his team has been tied now by Lafayette, a team they defeated 3-0 earlier in the season. So for Lafayette, if they can maintain this this tie, they'll be quite pleased, I'm sure. I tell you, Virginia Beach better toughen up because this Lafayette team has some momentum going now for it, Jeff, and they could come at them again. A lot of goals are scored within minutes of each other. Mike Cutter again! Good ball, Neil White on the right side, and he hits the ball wide of the post. You saw Lafayette knock the ball around. There's a good look at Neil White, who's moved up from the back to a right wing position. They knocked the ball around well, and Neil White had the ball on the right-hand side. And I think also, Lenny, you'll probably agree that it was uh, very unselfish of Mike Cutter to give the ball up there because he was in a position where he maybe had a chance to shoot, but he saw a teammate in a better position. Yeah, he w it was very unselfish. That's really nice to see at this level. You like to see the kids giving the ball up to people who are in, in a more opportune situation, and I think that's what he saw, and he did, and uh, it just didn't work out for him. As a, coach, as a coach sometimes, I think I'd like to see him take the ball because he's probably got a little bit more uh, tougher of a shot, uh, and, and he's already proven himself once. But it's nice to see these unselfish. Good, good goal kick. Long ball, and Sean Moore comes out for it. Let's see if Virginia Beach can get that goal. I have a feeling now that a goal will win it. We're not too far from the end. We're probably with under five minutes, right around five minutes. So if either team can score, that should do it. A foul by Virginia Beach, and you see number eight, Dave Bashara, walking away from it. He was taken down there, and the Lafayette Admirals will put the ball in play with a goal kick, uh, not a goal kick, a free kick. Jeff, this, if this is a tie at the end of uh, regulation, it ends as a tie, correct? Correct. Yeah. Unlike 
state cup or tournament matches which quite often are broken by overtime periods and or penalty kicks this game will end in a tie if it uh, if neither team can score here in the last five minutes on the right side is Mike Pelton cutter after the ball Whalen I think Whalen has been moved back um, Lenny he was a uh, wing earlier in the game and now Kevin apparently is looking for a little more speed up front and he's got Whalen playing near the back almost a dangerous play Neil White coming up with it Neil White's a real scrapper went down there great die that was an Academy Award there Jeff what do you think I think so and I think Neil will be the first to admit you see yeah. a little smile on his face as he comes over this way near the sideline is uh, Mike Shoemate but now Sean Moore making a long run good tackle from the back by uh, number 10 Perry Miles and there's Copley playing the ball back and Shoemate comes up with it Shoemate and Yonkers Yonkers leaning into Shoemate with every ounce he's got but he knocked it out of play and Mike Shoemate throws it in if I had a buck in my pocket right now Jeff I wouldn't I'd leave it in my pocket I wouldn't have a clue as to who's got the momentum now it's going end to end isn't it it's very much an even game quite yeah. unlike the first half which was dominated by Virginia Beach Lafayette has gotten the momentum after that goal and it wouldn't surprise me to see them score another. You can hear Kevin Denson saying to his team, come on, get intense, get intense. I think that's what they have to do at this point. That's easy to say and it's hard to do though. For the, for, uh, the Admirals, Perry Miles, long throw in. Bastek chests it down, but he loses it. And here's a chance for Lafayette, a crossing ball. Oh, the goalie plays it with his feet. Oh, that was dangerous. They just missed Mike Cutter. Good cross by Jeff Spire. Spar again. All kinds of pressure from this Admiral team. Near the end line, and it's out. Corner kick. Lafayette really pushing here in the final minutes of play. I have just about two minutes left, Jeff, and I think my, my watch is pretty close this time. So uh, Lafayette, if they're going to do something, that'll be a good time. Long corner kick. A little bit of a wind at the back. See Mike Cutter moving around for the ball. East goalie has to push that one over. I think he was surprised. It looked as if a teammate would come out and head the ball. Then at the last second, it was apparent that Keller was going to have to catch the ball. And rather than take a chance on mishandling, and he wisely knocked it over the end. So we've got a second chance. Goal, uh, corner kick being taken by Shoemate. Mike Shoemate trying to lift this one up into the area. Played out well first time by the uh, beach. And there's a long ball over the end. Back in the lineup is Frank McKinney, number 13. Virginia Beach, a long way to go. They've been tied by Lafayette, 1-1, under a minute. Unofficially, of course. So a long one by Steve Fort. Lafayette, nice header down to Neil White. Neil cuts it back inside. And again, Neil White sticking. Good job of getting the ball down the sideline, but it's won by Lafayette. They seem to be getting to the ball first now. Sean Moore up front, pushes it by, but it's won back by Perry Miles, who's done a good job in the back for the Admirals today. A long ball. Admirals headed out. Frank McKinney, nice move by McKinney. Nice ball to Sean Moore, down the left side near the penalty area, and he touches it again. And on, oh, unfortunately, he knocks it over behind the goal. We should be near the final whistle at almost any time it could go. So it looks like unless somebody can do something here, we're going to have a 1-1 tie. Lafayette Admirals and Virginia Beach Cobras here at Little Creek Amphibious Base in the Virginia Beach Soccer Club Select Game of the Week. Shoemate, long goal kick. Hit the ball real nicely. And Sean Moore comes up with it. Good play by Tommy Bishop. Neil White, one, one though by Bastek. Down the sideline, out of play. Lafayette's gonna throw it in. There can't be but 30 seconds left, Jeff. Down to the final, final portion of this match. Virginia Beach, surprisingly, is being tied by Lafayette. And there is the final whistle. Referee has 
sounded the whistle for the end of the match between the Virginia Beach Cosmos and the Lafayette, Ad Co I said Cosmos, I'm sorry, the Cobras and the Lafayette Admirals. And you see the Admirals being congratulated by their coaches. They are pleased with the results of the match. Uh, quite a turnabout after their 3-0 thumping earlier in the season. And the Cobras, on the other hand, are walking dejectedly away. To them, this is as crushing as a defeat. There's Mike Cutter waving to the camera. This is as crushing as a defeat for the Cobras. They're off to an excellent start, 4-1-1, one one, challenging for a first place in the 1970 age group. And they've been tied unexpectedly by Lafayette today. Jeff, you know, Virginia Wesleyan suffered from the same disease that the, the Virginia Beach team did a couple of years ago. Do you remember when we would get up, we were up eight times by a goal and then up getting tied or, or beat. I think what happens is you get up and you sort of sit back a little bit and try to play too conservatively. And maybe the Beach suffered that disease today a little bit. What do you think? I think so. They probably uh, did let down a bit after they got that 1-0 lead. And uh, Kevin Denson said before the match that it was going to be important for his team to be up for the game today. And they may have taken Lafayette lightly. The boys are... Crossing midfield now. Going through the handshake routine. Looks like they're using their left hands today. Isn't that interesting? Well, we'll be back with a word with Kevin Denson, the coach of the Cobras, and get his reaction to today's tie. So stay with us. Hi, with me now is Kevin Denson, head coach of the Cobras, whose team was just tied by the Lafayette Admirals one to one on a goal in the final five minutes. Kevin, were you pleased overall in the way your team played today? Uh, overall, yes. I think we had a, probably about a letdown for like three minutes late in the half, and that seems to happen to us quite a bit against Lafayette and Williamsburg. We can't get enough goals to have that letdown, so we ended up tying the teams one to one. Well, that, I understand it's going to affect you also in the standings. You came into the match with a 4-1-1 one, and one record, and you were in sole possession of first place, so that'll put you back. But uh, overall, your team didn't play that badly. I think maybe you can uh, mention a few of the boys who had a good match for you, if you will. Well, I think uh, Sean Moore had a good match. He had, they had that one goal. He was able to beat the wings on Lafayette's team pretty consistently. I also think we had some good play. John DeLoach played excellent on the outside back. He knocked the ball wide. We were able to feed the ball up the field. Patrick Bassett did a good job at sweeper, too. We are experimenting with the offsides trap right now, and we were able to pull out pretty successfully with that also. Well, I think uh, Ferranti, your center half, had a pretty good game also. Paul did really well at center midfield. We uh, got him supporting everybody right now. We're usually just push forward. Now he's pretty much dominator, dominating by supporting most of our players, and he does a good job that way, too. Did you think, Kevin, when you went in at halftime, only up 1-0, that you might be in a little bit of trouble? Well, I didn't. I thought we could pretty much control the first half, so uh, the problem, like I said, was motivation for the second half. We had a pretty good first half, and, you know, Joey and I were concerned about what we could do to get the kids up for the second half. Obviously, we didn't do a good enough job. Well, I don't think you can be faulted. Your kids played hard, and uh, unfortunately, things just didn't go your way today. And as a result, we have the Lafayette Admirals and the Virginia Beach Cobras playing to a one-to-one -one tie. We'll be back with Lenny Long and, a, and the play-on edition of today's game in a moment. 